So your provider told you that your pap smear was abnormal or you received your results in the mail or in your electronic health records. You're not sure how to interpret your results. Well, I want to help you. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll understand one, what your results mean, and two, you'll know what your next step is after receiving an abnormal result. There are algorithms created to help women and their providers know when to schedule their pap smears, and it gives recommendations on what to do if the results are abnormal. This test is recommended for all women between the ages of 21 and 65. The use of a pap smear is helpful in detecting precancerous lesions. This means that the pap smear looks for cell changes on the cervix that might become cervical cancer if they are not treated appropriately. If you have reviewed your results yourself, you may also have seen an HPV result. The HPV test is also done to look for the virus human papillomavirus. HPV can cause these cellular changes. Okay, so now that we know you have an abnormal pap smear, which is common, if you see the letters ASC, US, or ASCUS, this stands for atypical squamal cells of undetermined significance. This is a lot of words, but to sum it up, your results showed an infection, but the lab technician who reviewed your sample was not certain what type of infection. This could also be a cause of or a result of inflammation, low hormone levels, or benign or non-cancerous growth, such as a cyst or polyp. When you get an ASCUS result, additional testing is needed. Remember, something is not normal and we need more tests to figure out what's going on. It is common for your provider to test for HPV or repeat the pap smear. Why test for HPV? Certain HPV or human papilloma virus types are known to cause cervical cancer. An HPV test can be done by itself but it is common to co-test, meaning the practitioner may order pap smear and HPV. A quick recap, certain HPV types increases your risk for cervical cancer. If the pap smear shows abnormal cells and your HPV results are positive, your risk for cervical cancer is increased. Okay, so what if the pap smear shows a GC? This stands for atypical granular cells. These type of cells are found on the inner part of the cervix or the lining of the uterus. Here is the cervix and here is the uterus. The pap smear shows AGC. This can be a sign of a more serious problem up inside the uterus. Your provider may ask you to come back for a colposcopy. And because a colposcopy is the next step for many of the abnormal results that I'm going to discuss, I will explain later in detail the colposcopy procedure. Okay, so what if your pap smear lists ASCH or atypical squamal cells and cannot exclude HCL? It means there are abnormal cells in the tissue that lines the outer part of the cervix. This may be a sign of high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, or HCL, which may turn into cancer if untreated. Your practitioner may not know for certain if you have high-grade lesions, and it is likely they will schedule you for a colposcopy. Another abnormal pap smear is HCL. As previously mentioned in ASCH, HCL stands for high grade squamous epithelial lesion. These abnormal cells are often referred to as high grade squamous intraepithelial lesions. If untreated, these cells could become cancerous in the future. It is very likely that your practitioner will order a colposcopy. 
I will talk more about colposcopies again at the end of this video. What happens if your pap smear reads AIS or adenocarcinoma in situ? In AIS, abnormal cells are often found in situ or in the cervix. These cells may become cancerous and may spread to nearby tissue that is normal. AIS lesions are commonly referred to as precancerous lesions and may become cervical cancer if not treated properly. If your pap smear shows AIS, you also will likely need a colposcopy to rule out cancer. Lastly, if your pap smear shows cervical cancer cells, either squamous cells, carcinoma, or adenocarcinoma, this indeed is a rare finding, especially for women that are screened on a regular interval for cervical cancer. The reason being, abnormal cervical cells slowly progress into cancer and is often treated before it gets to this point. Before cancer appears in the cervix, the cells on the cervix go through changes known as dysplasia, in which abnormal cells began to appear in the cervical tissue. Over time, the abnormal cells may become cancer cells and start to grow and spread more deeply into the cervix and the surrounding areas. When pap smears reveal cervical cancer, prompt cervical cancer treatment is necessary. Now that you understand your test results and what they mean, you are either scheduled for a follow-up with your practitioner or you may already have a visit scheduled for a colposcopy procedure. A colposcopy is a procedure that closely examines the cervix, vagina, and vulva for signs of disease. I will warn you against watching videos on colposcopy because the visuals are far worse than the actual procedure. During the colposcopy, you are positioned in the examination chair in the same position as you would be as getting a pap smear. The procedure takes approximately 10 to 20 minutes. A speculum is inserted into the vagina and holds open the walls of the vagina so the practitioner could get a good look at your cervix. It examines for any abnormalities. He or she then uses a special microscope and looks through a lens. These lenses sort of resemble binoculars. The practitioner will then swab with a large Q-tip or cotton to clear away any mucus. Then a vinegar solution or something similar is applied to that area or areas of suspicion. There may be some tingling or burning sensation, but the solution, it helps to highlight those areas of concern. If the solution does make the suspicious areas more visible and the practitioner thinks part of the tissue should be sent to the lab for further investigation, he or she will perform a biopsy during the colposcopy. Here, a small sample of tissue may be collected. The results of the colposcopy will determine whether you will need further testings or treatments. There are several factors that will determine if a colposcopy is needed, when a repeat pap smear is required, and how often testings are recommended. As a provider, I have access to several resources, but I find the ASCCP app to be very helpful. I hope this video was helpful and you now understand your abnormal pap smear results. I also have high hopes that your follow-up visits and exams are normal. I suggest any female age 21 through 65 whose primary care provider offers you a pap smear to please get tested and do so as scheduled. Lastly, if you haven't been vaccinated against HPV, I encourage you to get vaccinated. HPV is linked to cervical cancer and getting vaccinated lowers your risk of developing cervical and other HPV related cancers. Please like, subscribe, and share this video if you found it helpful. Thanks for watching.